Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a STEMI case with a CTO, which required using the grenadoplasty technique. Our patient is a 55-year-old morbidly obese man. He smoked, but had no other past medical history. He came to the ER with about two hours of worsening chest pain. In the ER, his ECG had very subtle uh, borderline lateral ST segment elevations. Initial troponin was negative, uh, but he had significant ongoing chest pain uh, despite medical management. So the cath lab was uh, activated. On diagnostic angiogram, um, the RCA was uh, without significant disease, uh, but you can see some right to left uh, collaterals. The culprit is the LED, uh, which is 100% occluded uh, after the large uh, diagonal branch. Uh, the left main is uh, quite short, and you can see a hint of the circumflex, which is small but patent. So we went to work on the LED in what we thought was going to be a fairly straightforward intervention. The workhorse BMW wire crossed the occlusion easily, but kept being directed into a diagonal branch and could not pass more distally into the LED, so it was left into the D2. We tried a more hydrophilic pile of 50 wire, but that could not pass more distally into the LED either. So we switched to a heavier uh, Pilot 200 wire at this point, uh, thinking that the mid-LED lesion was at least subacute, uh, if not actually a CTO. So, but however, uh, even with the Pilot 200 wire, we were not able to enter uh, the occlusion. Uh, the location of the start of the occlusion was unclear, and the Pilot 200 wire kept buckling uh, or uh, kept sliding into the septal or diagonal branches. So what do we do next? So in the situations where there are collaterals, uh, contrast injection in the contralateral vessel is often useful to locate uh, where the occlusion is. So we went ahead and obtained femoral access and injected the RCA. Uh, this helped localize the remainder of the LED and the uh, occlusion itself actually looked relatively short. Uh, contralateral injections are routinely, if not universally used uh, in CTO-PCI. Uh, with contralateral injections, uh, we identified the location of the proximal cap of the LED occlusion and uh, punctured it uh, with a Pilot 200 wire uh, via a turnpike microcatheter. Now, quite often, at least in more subacute occlusions, after the proximal cap is punctured, the wire quickly sails across the occlusion and enters the uh, distal vessel. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, this was not true in our case. Uh, we had uh, some difficulty negotiating the Pilot 200 wire across the occlusion, uh, suggesting that the lesion is at least uh, somewhat calcified and is probably more chronic than subacute. Note that until we were sure that we crossed the lesion, all contrast test puffs at this point are done with contralateral injections. That's because if we happen to be in a subintimal location in a dissection, uh, anti-grid injections at this point could enlarge the dissection plane and make it more difficult uh, to get back into the true lumen. After a little effort, uh, the uh, LED occlusion was successfully crossed. Uh, but the turnpike microcatheter uh, could not follow. Uh, this is uh, usually not a very good sign. Uh, a 2.0 millimeter balloon uh, could not cross either. So what do you do if your wire cross, but your equipment cannot cross, and you are at a community hospital? Well, uh, there are several strategies. Uh, the first line strategies uh, use the guide and wire that you currently have in place. First, uh, try smaller balloons. Uh, you wedge the balloon as much as you can into the lesion, inflate, and then gradually size up to serially larger balloons. And note that in general, uh, longer balloons actually are slightly smaller at the distal edge uh, than shorter balloons. Next, uh, try to increase backup. Uh, I have a low threshold to reach for guide extension catheters, uh, such, as, such as the guide liner. Uh, deep throating the guide is another possibility. Uh, if there is a suitable side branch, uh, inflating an anchor balloon in the side branch will increase backup. However, uh, you will usually need to take out the guy liner to do this, and the anchor balloon uh, can sometimes injure the side branch. Uh, second line strategies involve either improving your wire or improving your guide. Uh, if the lesion can be rewired, uh, a buddy wire sometimes uh, can help uh, with getting equipment across. Using a stiffer wire or a wiggle wire also often helps, 
but directly wiring a challenging lesion with these wires is often difficult, and you'll usually need to get a microcatheter across the lesion first uh, to do a wire exchange. You can try to change your guide, uh, either to a more supportive guide, such as an AL guide, or a, use a larger 8 French guide. Now, swapping a guide over a coronary wire can be challenging. Uh, but I find that uh, sometimes passing an uh, uninflated balloon over the wire and passing the guide over the balloon shaft uh, instead of the uh, wire alone uh, can sometimes help. Uh, alternatively, uh, you can change uh, the approach completely. Uh, femoral approach often uh, can provide stronger backup uh, than radial approach. Uh, third line strategies uh, involve uh, plaque modification. Uh, this is where uh, you are at a disadvantage uh, if you are at a community hospital instead of a tertiary center. Uh, at a community hospital, you can't just reach uh, for rotational atherectomy, orbital atherectomy, or laser. Uh, these are usually not available. And more advanced techniques, uh, such as uh, dissection reentry wiring techniques, are generally uh, not recommended without surgical backup. Uh, but uh, there are other, other options that you can try. Uh, the uh, turnpike line of microcatheters are tapered at the tip, so if you can wedge the tip of the catheter in the lesion, uh, gently torquing the microcatheter can help dilate the lesion. But you need to be careful not to overdo it. Uh, if the uh, microcatheter doesn't move and you torque the catheter too much, you can lock the catheter onto the coronary wire, and the whole system will then have to come out, including the coronary wire. You can also reach for microcatheters with a uh, stiff uh, spiral tip, uh, such as the turnpike gold or the uh, tornus line. Uh, these catheters essentially screw into the, the, the proximal part of the lesion and perform a kind of uh, manual uh, atherectomy, and that sometimes can help get uh, other equipment across. Finally, there is grenadoplasty. This is a simple, cheap, but quite often forgotten technique, which should probably be used more often. Uh, grenadoplasty is also known as uh, balloon-assisted microdissection, or the BAM technique. The idea is to intentionally rupture a small balloon at the lesion to weaken the lesion enough to allow equipment to pass. So you wedge a small compliant balloon, uh, 1.5 millimeter or less, as much as you can into the lesion. You make sure that there are no bubbles uh, in the inflator line. You inflate the balloon to a very high pressure, so usually more than 30 atmosphere. Uh, to rupture the balloon. Uh, balloon rupture, by the way, is much more easily seen as a sudden pressure drop in your endoflator dial than on fluoroscopy. So as soon as you see a rapid pressure drop in your endoflator dial, you want to quickly draw vacuum in the endoflator uh, to aspirate uh, any debris. Sometimes you'll need to rupture a couple of balloons uh, to weaken the lesion uh, sufficiently. The procedure is uh, generally safe with small balloons and perforations are rare. So back to our patient. Uh, remember, we had trouble passing the turnpike as well as a 2.0 millimeter balloon. So we first tried to improve backup. However, uh, there was a lesion in the proximal LED near its ostium, and the uh, guide liner could not enter the LED and was of no help. We tried smaller balloons, uh, but the 1.5 millimeter balloon uh, did not cross. We then wedged a 1.2 millimeter balloon into the lesion as much as we could and dilated it, uh, hoping to stretch the lesion enough for a 1.5 millimeter balloon to enter, uh, but that was not successful either. At this point, we already knew that a turnpike uh, couldn't cross, so we could not easily exchange wires. Uh, we tried buddy wiring, uh, but we could not get a second wire to cross the lesion, and leaving the buddy wire in D2 uh, did not help. Uh, so we went ahead and tried uh, grenadoplasty. Uh, we wedged a uh, compliant 1.5 by 12 millimeter balloon in the lesion and intentionally ruptured it at 34 atmospheres. And remarkably, uh, after a single uh, grenadoplasty, a 2.0 by 20 millimeter balloon crossed and dilated the lesion. Uh, Timmy 3 flow was uh, restored after angioplasty. Uh, we did more predilation with up to a 3.5 millimeter balloon uh, before uh, trying stents uh, to make sure that the lesion could be fully expanded. We then went ahead and stented the LED with 4.0 and 3.5 millimeter DES. Uh, we used OCT uh, to guide uh, post dilation, uh, which we took up to a 4.5 millimeter NC balloon. 
And we had a very satisfactory uh, final uh, angiographic result. Uh, the patient's uh, EF uh, fortunately remained preserved. He did well and uh, went home on uh, hospital day two. Take home messages. If you have an occluded vessel with an ambiguous location or origin, simultaneous contralateral injections can be very useful. If you get across the occlusion with a wire, uh, but are having trouble uh, getting your equipment across, uh, think about the following strategies. Uh, first, use smaller balloons. Wedge the balloon in a lesion and serially dilate up. Try to increase your backup, uh, usually with a guide extension catheter or sometimes by uh, deep throating your guide. Next, uh, try to improve your rail. Uh, try a stiffer wire, a wiggle wire, or, or sometimes a buddy wire. Less convenient, but you can also try to change your guide uh, to a more supportive or a larger gauge guide. Next, you can try to stretch the lesion uh, using uh, tapered microcatheters. You can also try to do limited, quote, uh, manual atherectomy uh, using stiff tipped uh, microcatheters such as the Turnpike Gold um, or the Tornus. And remember grenadoplasty, the BAM technique, rupture a small balloon in the lesion. It's simple, it's cheap, fairly safe, and often effective. And of course, all these strategies can be and are usually used uh, in combination. Uh, finally, if nothing works, uh, the patient uh, can be referred uh, to your tertiary center of choice uh, for rotational, orbital, or laser atherectomy, as well as uh, advanced uh, dissection uh, reentry techniques. Thank you for watching.